In this video, we'll be trying to solve some jam physics question on sound waves. Now, this is a continuation from our last class on sound waves. Let's look at the questions. The first question here says, a person shouts near a wall and heard the echo 10 seconds after. How far is the person from the wall? Take the speed of sound to be 340 meters per second. All right. Now let's try to get a diagram for this question here. Now let's use this as the ground. All right. We use this as a ground. Um, the ground surface. Let's have this. All right. So let's say we have a person here. So you have a particular person. So you have a person standing here. They said the person did what? Shouts near a wall. So let's create a wall here. So this is the wall. Okay. Let's call this the wall. Okay, so we'll call this the wall. Let's label this wall. This is the wall. Then here, this is the person. So this person is shouting. That's from his mouth. He's bringing out sound waves. He's shouting um, towards the wall. So from this, the sound, the sound wave moves from his mouth to the wall. That's this. And we, we discussed the concept of the reflection of sound waves that causes echo in our last class. If you missed our first class on sound wave, I will leave a link to check out that class in the video description. The sound wave hits the wall and then goes back to the person. And this is where reflection occurs. All right. So the sound wave comes back to the person and the person hears the sound wave just like this. OK, now they said a person shouts near a wall and heard the echo 10 seconds later. All right. So that means from here, if you list our given parameter given, we're given the time that the person hears the echo. Let's call time. That's time there. C as equal to 10 seconds. Number two. Also, they said, um, take the speed of sound to be 340 meter per second. Number two, we have speed of sound or velocity. So velocity or speed of sound V is equal to 340 meters per second. Now, the question here is to discover how far the person is from the wall, right? How far is the person from the wall? That's the question there. So you have to find how far the person is from the wall. So what you're looking for there is distance. Um, distance. Let's call this D as equal to unknown. All right. So here's what we know from the concept of echo. No, first things first, we know that velocity V is equal to displacement over time. For, for this question, I'll use the term distance all over time. All right. And from our last class, we discussed that the distance, the total distance traveled by a sound wave is equal to two times the distance between the source and the reflecting surface. OK. So note that for a reflecting surface, the total distance, let's call it the capital D, is equal to two times the distance between the source. In this case, the source of the sound wave is the person shouting. And the reflecting surface, let's call it surface, is the wall, which is this one here. All right. And the total distance traveled by the sound wave is equal to the distance from the source to the sound to the surface, which is this D here, distance from the source to the surface, and then the distance after reflection from the surface back to the source. That becomes this D here. The total distance equal to distance from this point to this, that's the first D. And then going back to this, that's the second D. That becomes D plus D, which is what there? 2D. This is one of the most important concepts when it comes to calculating velocity and distance in respect to sound waves and echoes. All right. Now, having said this, we have to find the distance between the person and the source. Now, from here, from a normal um, motion, we know that velocity is equal to distance over time. But for echoes, V is equal to capital D. Because the distance is always two times the distance between the source and the surface, reflecting surface. So 2D over what there? T. So we have this. All right. So this becomes the equation we use when it comes to calculating um, echoes. From here, we have that V is equal to, record that capital D is equal to 2D all over 
c so here's the formula we'll be using now let's impute values the value of v is 340 so v becomes 340 is equal to 2d becomes 2 times the distance you're looking for all over the time they give us time as 10 seconds so we have 10 at this point let's cross multiply this is all over 1 2d times 1 gives you 2d is equal to 3, 340 times 10 becomes 340 multiplied by 10 we have this from here we now have that 2d is equal to 3 working on this we have that 2d is equal to 340 times 10 gives you 3400 so we have this to get z we we'll divide here by 2 divide here by 2 this cancels this so it means that distance d between the source or the boy and the wall is equal to 3400 divided by 2 and that gives you 1700 all right and of course this will be measured in meters so the answer there is 1700 meters that's your answer so going back to the question here uh, we can say the distance between uh, okay so how far is the person from the wall you can say the person the person is 1700 meters from the wall okay we've explained all of the concepts on sound waves in our previous class so if you missed that class i'll leave a link to the class on sound wave in the video description let's look at the second question question two says what is the minimum distance required for a person to hear an echo of his sound that's the question there what is the minimum distance required for a person to hear an echo of his sound now we also treated this in our last class where we said first things first for a person to hear an echo of his sound this echo must arrive at least one tenth that's one over ten seconds later so we said that for a person to experience the concept of echo then the echo must arrive at a later time after the original sound wave and we said the time should be at least 0 0.1 seconds later all right so that means that means the time required for an echo to arrive after the original sound should be at least 0 0.1 seconds so with this let's record the, the echo equation so with this let's record the echo equation record that we said v is equal to 2d all over t and we said this is the equation we use in the concept of echo all right now if you want to make t to be subject of the formula what do we have from here let's make t to be subject of the formula if we do that this is all over one cross multiply two times two d times one gives you two d is equal to v times t gives you v t so we have this now from here to get t we divide here by v divide here by v this cancels this so it means that two d all over v is equal to t so we have this record that we said for a person to hear an echo then the time t should be greater than 0 0.1 seconds but if t is equal to 2d over v it means that i'll replace t by this value so i'll replace t being 2d all over v that's t should be greater than 0 0.1 seconds now in this case d represents the distance between the source that's the person and the reflecting surface and v is equal to the velocity of sound wave which is 340 meters per second it's a constant in air all right the velocity of sound wave in air is 340 meter per second and the velocity of sound wave v is equal to 340 meters per second it's a constant all right this is the value of the velocity of sound wave in air from here if i impute values would we'll have that 2d all over v v is 340 is greater than 0 0.1 of course in seconds all right proceeding with this what do i have there of course you solve this like a normal equations which means my first tax is to cross multiply that becomes this times this and then this times this 
2d times 1 gives you 2d is greater than becomes 340 times 0 0.1 from here you have that 2d is greater than 340 times 0 0.1 gives you 34 to get d i'll divide here by 2 divide here by 2 this cancels this so d is greater than 34 divided by 2 gives you 17 and your answer here will be meters so you can see that for a person to hear the echo of his sound the person should be at a minimum distance of about 17 meters so the answer there is 17 meters that's your answer let's look at the third question let's look at the third question here the third question here says which of the following is true about sound waves right which of the following is true about sound waves a it is a transverse wave b it is both a transverse and mechanical wave c it is just a longitudinal wave d it is both a longitudinal and mechanical wave all right so you have a b c d which of these is your answer leave your option in the video comments all right so leave your an your answer here right which option do you think is correct leave the answer in the comment section so comment your answer and give your reason why you think so and i will tell you if you're correct or not now don't forget that we've already treated this concept in our previous class all right so you can go and check the previous class you see a hint to getting the correct answer of this question all right look at the hints come back answer this question leave the correct option in the comment section and i will tell you if you're correct or not okay don't forget that you can get my books and courses from my website simply visit www.jonahimare.com forward slash courses or www.jonahimare.com forward slash books to get any of the available courses or books also, you can join my channel membership to get access to exclusive content, all right? As usual, if you enjoyed this class, don't forget to hit the like button, all right? Like this video, leave a comment, all right? For your comments, I give you a task. For your comments, I give you a task. What is the correct option in that question? Leave it in the comment section and I'll tell you if you're correct or not. Don't forget to subscribe. If it's your first time here or if you're yet to subscribe, please do well to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon and select all so that you get notified whenever we upload a new content. Then finally, do all to share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class.